Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are carrying on with our dual wield katana ultimate build. And just quickly, before we get any further into the video, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So if you have watched the previous video, you'll be at the stage where you have the Moon Veil and you have the Uchi Katana. If you started the game off as a Samurai, you can then wield two Uchi Katanas. You can have one set up for Lightning or Fire or Bleed or whatever status effect you want. Then the other one you can use for pure physical attacks. You can also just run Moon Veil and you can wield a Shield if that's going to help you out. But we've already covered that stuff, so if you haven't seen the video, I will leave it linked in the description. And I recommend going back and watching that one because we cover how you can get your hands on both of these weapons. So we are going to start off with the headpiece or the mask for this one, which is not the Witch's Glintstone Crown. But from the very start of the game, the first step, if you come up north to Gatefront, you come along to Stormhill Shack, you either defeat Godric... Or you come up this way, all the way to the end of this bridge, and then up through the rocks, and all the way around to Lake Face and Cliffs. Then as you get down here, so from Lake Face and Cliffs, if you follow the road all the way down to Lake Shore, then come up here, and you are going to have Rhea Lucaria Academy. In order to get into this academy, because there is a seal that blocks off the gate, I'll show you that one quickly. So from Academy Gate Town, which is just here in the middle of the lake, we are going to head kind of northwest. We're basically trying to get onto this path here. But I think we're going to have to come up from here. There's a little like staircase that leads up. So if I place a beacon there. If we head over that rooftop, we come along here. We just keep following it. There's going to be a site of grace there as well. So you can save a checkpoint. There we go. So from here, if I get rid of that beacon... And then I come up here, ignore all the enemies. Then when you get to the very top, if you just carry on following this round to the north, ignore that fire thingy. Then when you get up here, you're going to see the massive seal that blocks this gate off. You're also going to see a sight of grace. In order to break this seal, or at least get past it, what you need to do is head over to the west and come to Temple Quarter. When you are at Temple Quarter, if you head up north and you come past all of these scarabs, there is going to be a massive dragon. You can either take the dragon down, or you can make your way past the dragon. So if we look on our map, just very quickly, you are going to see we are in this rock formation that's here. Over here, there's going to be a corpse. There's a few drops here, and one of them is going to be the key that breaks the seal and lets you enter the academy. What you then need to do is make your way through the academy until you get to the debate parlor. This is going to be a boss fight to so take down the boss. So when you are here, you're going to head north and just keep running. Then what we are going to do is when we get to the top of these stairs, we're going to head left. If you want to get to the Grand Library, it's up over there on that spiraling that ramp. And what we're going to do is come up here. We're going to make our way up these stairs. Just try and ignore all the combat. And then jump over this left-hand side. Then run up these stairs here. Try not to die. Then you can grab this bit of loot, which is a level 3 golden rune, and jump onto this rooftop here. When you're on this rooftop, you're going to want to run to your south-southwest. There's going to be an enemy here, or maybe a couple, so I was going to quickly take these out. If it lets me uh, slice them. There you go, I'm glad this guy didn't fall off. He dropped me a bit of loot. We've got a Cuckoo Glintstone. So what I'm going to have to do is pop a flask. Then, over here on the southwest side, we're going to have a ladder. Climb all the way to the top. When you get to the very top of the ladder, keep heading west all the way along here. There 
and just be careful of all the enemies then what you're going to do is from here you're going to jump onto this rooftop down here then we're going to drop onto the one below then we're going to head west make sure that you run and jump from that point try not to mess this one up because if you do die if you don't jump far enough across any gaps you start back here Okay, I got my runes back. What we're going to do is drop down here. We're going to take a big run and a massive jump. And just about make it. Then we're going to do the same again. And then follow this all the way around to the north. There's going to be an enemy that comes in and tries killing you. Then from there, you're going to run straight into here because there was an enemy. There he is. He uh, keeps shooting me. But when you get in here, you'll see the broken floor. And you just want to drop down. Make sure that you stick on the wood you're going to see it like a crystal crab and once you kill him you are going to get the lazuli glintstone crown so if you compare the one i'm wearing to the one we've just got the witch's glintstone crown boosts your arcane and your intelligence if you look at my stamina 82 you're going to need a lot of stamina with dual wield katanas but if we have a look at lazuli glintstone crown we're going to lose the arcane, we're going to lose a little bit of health, but our stamina goes up 19 because our dexterity is being boosted by 3 and my intelligence has already been boosted from 60 to 63 because of this one, so the Lazuli Glintstone Crown does the same thing. So you're getting 3 dexterity, 3 intelligence at the cost of a little bit of your HP. I say a little bit, is like 200. But that's the sort of risk you've got to take especially wanting to run this sort of a build. And I mean, now we look like an even bigger idiot. So the next thing we're going to do is get our hands on Terra Magicus. If you drop to the very bottom of that tower, you'll also get a level 4 Somber Smithing Stone. And you'll even get some Crab Eggs if you're lucky. At this stage, once you drop to the bottom and you've grabbed your... Crab Eggs and the Somber Smithing Stone... If you come outside, there's another crystal crab. And if you kill the crab, you are going to get the twin sage glintstone crown. So it's from where we drop down to get the lazuli one. Drop all the way to the bottom. Pull out your bow and you're going to get the twin sage one as well. If you want that one, it's going to put your health back up. And it's going to boost your intelligence by another three. So it's a six intelligence boost. But you won't have the extra dexterity. And you're going to need that with this katana build purely because of the stamina. What you're going to do is back where the dragon was to give you access to the academy. If you keep heading over northeast, you will eventually come across a cave that is going to require... So you'll see it's here. It's Academy Crystal Cave. Just behind all of these scarabs, you are going to need two stone sword keys. Once you have them, enter the cave. You are going to come across a Sight of Grace. So, make your way through this cave. Just keep running. You don't need to attack anything straight away. I would recommend using Sword of Night and Flame if you have it. Or if your katanas are a high enough level, use that. But you're going to keep following the route that I've taken. Do a 180 on yourself round to the right. Try and ignore all the incoming damage. You'll get to this door here. There's going to be another couple of enemies in here, but ignore these ones as well. And when you get to this stage, there's going to be a boss fight. And this boss fight, at first, is a little bit scary. There's two crystal bosses. The thing with the crystal bosses is if you go for the standard physical damage, or even the Sword of Night and Flame, or something like that, these bosses have like a, a crystal armor. So essentially you just have to beat the armor down enough to break it. Then you can deal heavy damage to them. Once you have defeated these bosses. If you come into the room at the back. You're going to pull the lever. I mean if you haven't done this before you won't have to pull the lever. But now we're going to access the uh, Elden Ring's biggest elevator. So once you are on the elevator. Make your way up. And I mean this elevator is absolutely gigantic. But you've got to think, you're going from an underground cave all the way up to the sky, because we're going above the academy. When you do reach the top, 
if you come outside and make your way all the way up, climb up this ladder here, and when you get to the top of this ladder, there is going to be a chest, and inside that chest is going to be a spell, if I can find it. I always get stuck with this stuff, and I've, I've played over 100 hours of this game. There is going to be a spell called Terra Magicus. It raises the magic strength of those within the sigil. And this is a very good increase. You're going to need 20 intelligence for it. What Terra Magicus is going to do is if I press my left bumper, it's going to put a sigil on the floor. Then if I use my katana, that spell, like both of them, the horizontal and the vertical, are going to deal more damage. You have to be within this circle when you're doing it. But as soon as you've cast a spell, you can switch over to your other katana, your Uchi katana, and you're going to be able to still use all your attacks, but you've got this extra buff on the floor that's going to give you a lot of extra damage. So Terra Magicus will last for 30 seconds, and it gives you an increase of 35% damage from any source of magic for that 30 seconds, as long as you're inside the sigil. So with these big guys out here... If I just use my normal transient moonlight, it deals 828. Then if I lock onto the other guy, from 828, if I quickly switch and I use the spell, it goes from 828 to 1118. So it's a 35% increase. It's there for 30 seconds. That's why I recommend getting Terra Magicus. So we're jumping from armor and spells over to a talisman now. And this is the Karian Filigreed Crest. It reduces your skill cost by 25%. So you use 25% less FP. And this is obtained from a vendor up at the Road to the Manor. But I'm a little bit confused because I've seen a lot of people say that the talisman's not there. They don't know how to get it. Apparently what you need to do is come to the like to the east or southeast of the first step and there's going to be an ever goal here and you need to go in there and take down an enemy called the bloodhound knight and it's part of blide's quest line or blade's quest line whatever you want to call him but i've never done it before so from the first step we'll go east through dragon burnt ruins come down here and you get to the agil lake south site of grace so I'm going to fast travel there. I'm going to come down and show you that I haven't taken down this guy. So I don't know why the filigreed crest shows up for me. So when we get here, we're going to come south. And I know I definitely haven't taken down this boss because I've never entered one of these. The good thing about them is once you go in, if you do die, there's a stake of Marika nearby. And your runes never stay in the arena. So if you die, you can collect your runes from outside. But this is Forlorn Hound Evergold, and if I examine it and enter, you're going to see that Bloodhound Knight Darrowill, or whatever his name is, is still alive. So if I come out of the little ring, there he is. He's a really aggressive bastard boss. I, I, I say, what the... He's weak to transient moonlight. My fucking god. And that's Bloodhound's Fang. That's a really, really good weapon. Yeah, if you, if you haven't taken down that Bloodhound, go and take him down. Transient Moonlight just two-tapped him on a plus six. So even though I've killed him, a lot of you might think, oh, you've killed him, it's obviously going to show up for you now. But I showed you that I had the filigreed crest before I took him down. So I don't understand how to actually get this talisman to show up at this vendor, but we'll go to the road to the manor. And as soon as you get here, there's going to be a vendor up here. If you go into purchase, you can see the Carrion Filigreed Crest. So I don't know how to actually unlock it. The wiki and everything says that you need to kill that Bloodhound Knight. But I didn't kill him, and I already had the crest. So I don't understand how I've actually unlocked it. But if it is the case of it not showing up for you, kill that Bloodhound Knight. Then come to this guy up at Road to the Manor, it's the top side of the lake. And once you get here, you'll be able to purchase it off him for 5,000 runes. And what we're going to do is leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about this in the comments. And I'll see you in the next part of this build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.